morning, Northwestern. The University of Northwestern Theater will be performing a classic Rodgers and Hammerstein musical this November, Oklahoma. Set in Western Indian territory just before statehood, a high-spirited rivalry between local farmers and cowhands provides the colorful background for this tale of romance and revelry. Oklahoma set the standard and established the rules for musical theater, which are still being followed today. It is considered one of the most beloved and truly American musicals of all time. The show will run the weekends of October 31st and November 7th in Maranatha Hall. UNW students each get a free ticket to the show, so reserve one today at the box office. Sports teams face different obstacles each year. The latest one to overcome is weather. Cold temperatures, rain, and mud have pushed practices indoors and have moved game times forward to try and attract more spectators. Despite having faced several obstacles this year, the women's soccer team has proved to play with a positive attitude no matter what the circumstance. The team this year consists of 25 players, 12 of them being freshmen or transfer students. Despite being a young team, head coach Josh Pettit believes that this only leaves room for improvement. I think they're doing very well. Uh, it's hard to get used to, um, you know, they come in early, uh, they're going to school uh, full time and we ask them also to, you know, come to practice every day along with tests, finding new friends, uh, all that stuff. So we have a lot of freshmen that start uh, for this team this year, so uh, I'm very proud of how they, uh, they've come in and, and, and kind of taken on that role in this team. Emily Boyce, a former member of the team, knows firsthand how the women are feeling. Considering the fact that they have a lot of freshmen coming in and a lot of just new bodies to work with and a lot of key uh, players are actually injured this year, so um, just given those two facts, I think they're doing really, really well. Despite these injuries and more, the women play on. This past weekend, the Eagles put up a tough match against the University of Minnesota Morris and Crown College in a doubleheader. Friday's game was a hard defeat, but the women came back on Saturday with intensity, tying the score at 2-2 just before halftime. It was a close game for the Eagles, but Crown took the lead in the second half, making the final score 3-2. We, we talk a lot and I tell this team that you know we're way more important than win losses. We play for something a lot different and a lot more special than any kind of win or loss and uh, those games really don't define us. It, you know how we play and our attitude and, and how we represent Christ is how uh, we define our teams. The women's soccer team will be playing North Central University at home Saturday at 315. According to a poll conducted by the Huffington Post, 84% of cell phone users don't believe they could go a day without their phones. When does convenience become an addiction? It doesn't matter where you are. Stores, restaurants, campus, or chapel. Cell phones are preoccupying the minds of their users everywhere. Smartphones provide their users with easy access to everything from social media to GPS services. It's no wonder we often prioritize them over our friends. I feel like your social media and everything, your email, your school kind of is on your phone. I need to talk to somebody and I mean, I just always have it on me because I <laughs> always want to be talking. Our generation is facing a new social problem, fubbing, which is snubbing the people around us in favor of our mobile devices. Even if users are not downright fubbing their friends, they may still keep their phone out and in view because it brings comfort. Nomophobia, the fear of being without one's cell phone, affects over half of smartphone users, and that's on the rise. You can combat this form of anxiety by leaving your phone at home when you go out and by limiting your usage. As personal as she is, Siri cannot be your best friend. I love you, Siri. I value you. Last Friday, over 30 volunteers showed up at the 6 o'clock Devo and prayer meeting in the stud. Then they headed to the Marie Sandvik Center to serve the homeless people of Minneapolis. I'm Tyler. And I'm Thomas. And we love Streetlight. Streetlight is a community of Northwestern students that is outreaching to the impoverished people of South Minneapolis. Here, volunteers have the opportunity to serve in many ways. Uh, the volunteers come in and do whatever we need needs to be done. Tasks can range from picking up trash around the property to unloading donations from trucks or simple house cleaning. 
The center holds a late night church service and dinner for the homeless and poor. They serve food to homeless people and people in need, um, whatever that looks like. And they have to get their spiritual food before they can get um, the, the real food. Second year volunteer Sam Mayhew said that Streetlight is all about fellowship and building relationships. Being able to just look in and watch people talking with each other, it just radiates joy. And that's, I think that's my favorite part. Along with serving and building relationships, evangelizing is also a big part of this ministry. However, freshman coordinator Aaron Bloom says you don't have to wait for the call to spread the gospel. When they're going to ministry, always looking for a call, like a call from God, like some special like sign from God to go and, and minister to the broken and the lost. But really, we've already been called to do that. Don't look for a voice in the sky or some like magical prophecy you see in a dream. The, the Word of God has already told you to go and share the gospel. If you're interested in becoming a part of Streetlight, the group meets at 5.30 tonight in the Billy for dinner. October is Disability Awareness Month in Minnesota. You have probably heard about DOS, the Disability Office for Support and Services. DOS works to make campus accessible for every student. They have installed ramps, elevators, and automatic doors all around campus and provide handicap accessible vehicles. We have about, <clears throat> usually about 100 students that come through the Disability Office. So they are getting different accommodations and they vary because of somebody's physical disability versus emotional or learning disability. This year is the 15th anniversary of DOS. To celebrate, they will be showing movies and hosting special breakout chapels. Well, that wraps up another week of Eagle 7 News. You can check out our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter. We'd love to hear your story suggestions. Until next time, I'm Jordan Beckers. And I'm Josette Eliff. Have a great weekend. I'm so excited for Oklahoma this weekend. I know. Go get the tickets. Go get tickets right, right after, after chapel. Yeah.